oh, this is another hygiene-ish type video, but it's especially recorded for the Folds of Steel people. You know who you are. You're those singers that can go out with your friends and drink like a whole bottle of wine or something or five shots or whatever, have a good old time, and then roll up into your voice competition the next day and totally win it. Or like totally nail the audition or totally have a totally fine performance. You guys are the naturally sized zeros of the singing world. And the rest of us, yes, we do hate you. Just kidding. We don't hate you. We do envy the fact that you get to have a lot of fun while the rest of us are like, no, 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 I can't go out. I have to sing tomorrow. So <laughs> please excuse our envy. Um, but I guess it's good to be an introvert if you're like not a, boy, a fold of steel person. Then you'll always just be like, singing, that's my reason not to go out. Yeah, I'm gonna sing tomorrow. I've totally not done that excuse before. <laughs> I really haven't, friends. I really haven't. Um, no, not ever. Anyway, um, so Folds of Steel people. Here's something to know about hygiene stuff and, and the vocal habits you want to build. Um, it changes throughout your lifespan, so I just encourage you. There, there are very few people who can sustain... Um, bad or whatever, potentially harmful vocal habits over the course of their whole lifespan and have completely healthy functional voices the whole time. So we all know there's those stories of, well, such and such singer had a fine career and they smoked every single day, like two packs a day. We've all heard that, you know? There's always those exceptions to the rule kind of stories. The whole point of warning someone when they're young is that the idea is, especially for voice teachers who are like, please don't do that though. Don't, because you don't want to assume you're that person who can get away with doing it for 30 years. Cause you might not be, you might be the person who can totally get away with it in your twenties. And then it starts to cost you. Then your high notes start to struggle. Some brilliance is lost from your resonance or something. Your voice becomes a little less brilliant, a little more like you're kind of singing through, you know, like, like little muffled, you know? a little more muffled, like you're singing through something. Um, you might be like your vocal stamina gets affected. You can't quite make it through a whole show, right? So um, the point of trying to cultivate good vocal habits early is that if you're not the person who's going to be the folds of steel person your whole life, um, it's good to cultivate good habits now so that hopefully you can get used to adjusting your vocal habits, your vocal lifestyle as you age and as things start to affect you. You can gain awareness for when things are affecting you and you can hopefully sort of reroute um, your something about your lifestyle, whether it be I'll go out with friends after the performance is done or um, maybe not the day before the performance, I'll do it two days before or something, right? It's learning that sort of thing about you. It's learning boundaries, just having some boundaries for your voice um, to keep it in good enough shape that you can get through your performances and you can get those gigs that you want. Um, and if you're a Folds of Steel person who doesn't have a particular interest in singing professionally but still has an interest in singing like throughout your life, uh, it's still a good thing to get used to. Um, I think a lot of people that I knew who were like folds of steel when I was in my 20s have probably changed their habits by now. Uh, a fair number of them did, it did start to creep into their voices that they, like if I knew that, you know, uh, they weren't the best, usually the smokers, you know, sorry. Like we usually know who you are and you usually get away with it just fine for a while, but there is a certain point usually, there's sort of a critical point, a certain age where people are like, yeah, starting to not sound quite the same, or they're not sounding quite as good as they used to. Um, and that's, you know, the point of learning about hygiene and being aware that you might not be able to sustain uh, your folds of steel status throughout your life is to hopefully cut it off at the pass um, before you just become the singer who disappears from the scene completely um, and has, you know, the tenor who's lost all high notes, like, hopefully. You can just kind of cut it off before you get there. 
unless you just, you know, redirecting your career is fine. Like that's not, there's no big deal with that. But if it's not wanted, if it's like a forced redirection, that's hopefully what you can avoid by learning to be aware of when your voice needs you to take a little better care of it. Okay, pulled to steal people. So we will continue to hate you a little bit, envy you really, because you get to have a lot of fun that those of us with fragile little voices don't get to have. But you know what? Um, you might not be pulled to steal forever. So just keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on your voice. Make sure you're not being affected by some of the stuff you're doing, the like bad habits or whatever, uh, that you're pretty convinced are not affecting you. Because nine times out of 10, Folds of Steel people have amazing voices and they're usually amazing singers with really amazing artistry too. But, you know, um, I just personally would like to keep you guys still in the game because why let that go to waste, right? Okay. I will stop lecturing. Bye, Folds of Steel folks, and bye, everybody else. See you guys later.